Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sanas of FanDuel. What's going on, Jim? Instead of a Friday afternoon news dump, we got a Monday morning news dump, which maybe means they want everyone to see it, with Leonard Fournette being released by the Jaguars, so plenty to discuss here, and happy Monday to all of us in the content world now. I think your hypothesis is correct, especially when the head coach comes out and says, yeah, we try training him for anything. Nobody wants this guy. And it's not just uh, congratulations to us in the content world, but Jim, you are the proud owner of Leonard Fournette in multiple dynasty leagues. I am the proud owner of Leonard Fournette in a redraft league. What do we do now? Uh, I trimmed that. It's no longer multiple. It is no longer pr plural. There is a singular league, and whoever sends me the dumbest offer that I can get, I will happily take, because this does impact Leonard Fournette quite a bit, because now he is a free agent. That means there is going to be a team that is going to take a shot on Leonard Fournette. But realistically, when you think about the running back landscape across the NFL— how many different teams have a spot where they could put Leonard Fournette into a situation where he would have a lot of fantasy relevancy? Like you could consider maybe Washington. I'm hoping not because Antonio Gibson is someone I have a lot of. You could consider New England on that list potentially, but their salary cap situation is not very pretty despite making some moves earlier. So there aren't a lot of places Fournette could go where he would have a really good fantasy relevant role. So I kind of think that if you have him in a redraft league, kind of see what your league mates do and see if they will give you an offer for him because the value is pretty low. Now, with that said, if people totally abandon ship on Fournette, there is still some hope here. Like, again, like if he were to sign in New England or Washington, there is a chance that Fournette could have fantasy relevancy it just wouldn't be until, you know, a later round pick. So if you have a draft coming up in the next week or so, don't totally cross Leonard Fournette off your list. Like if you get down to the situation where you're drafting, you know, running backs who also have obscure paths to relevancy, their Fournette might make sense, but it's going to have to take a long wait because this does impact his viability a lot, obviously. And you need it to be a really good situation for him to really spring up. So Fournette, someone I am avoiding and trying to get whatever I can for him, we can reevaluate. It's just kind of you need to wait a long time before Fournette becomes viable once again. For me, hopefully that wait isn't that long. We're going to find out if a team claims him where he'll be in just a couple of days. If they wait for him to to clear uh, waivers and that team's going to sign him for less money than he's owed, well, that'll take a little bit longer. But Leonard Fournette is going to end up somewhere. You mentioned Washington, New England. Those are two early teams we've seen him linked to. I I've thrown out the Rams, the Chiefs, certainly the Bears with David Montgomery's injury. There's a lot of question marks surrounding Leonard Fournette, and he's probably going to screw over other fantasy owners besides the ones that just uh, have him on their teams. We're going to see. But with Leonard Fournette out of the picture, that does clear the way and make things, oh, well, yes, a little bit clearer, but also a little bit murkier out there in Jacksonville. If you're drafting right now, Jim, who are the running backs, running backs, that's plural, which ones do you want to grab in your drafts this week? I think any of them are honestly in play, like Rykel Armstead, Divino Zigbo, and Chris Thompson are all options. I think that if you're looking for the one with the best floor, who has the most bankable production, it's probably going to be Chris Thompson, because there was buzz around Thompson already, even before this Fournette release, that he was getting work on third down. So you can kind of, you know, ba bank in some production on Chris Thompson, and you kind of want to skew towards the pass-catching guys anyway in an offense that's probably, or on a team that's probably not going to be all that good. So number one for me is Chris Thompson. Rykel Armstead would be number two because they did put some draft capital in Reichwell Armstead last year. We did see him in week six, week 17. Both he and Ozigbo were on the team then, and Armstead played about two-thirds of the snaps, whereas Ozigbo played about one-third. So Armstead would be number two behind Thompson for me. I think that Ozigbo is still worth drafting in a in a redraft league, and you know he may be on some waiver wires lingering in dynasty leagues too. So I would check to see what is where Ozigbo is at because there is a lot of uncertainty, and uncertainty creates value in fantasy football. So I would say target any of those three guys, but Thompson for me is number one. Should probably go somewhere around the James White range. I think he's kind of similar to James White right now, but then I would go uh, with Rykel Armstead second, and then D Divino Zigbo in the range once you get to guys like uh, maybe like a Tony Pollard, uh, somewhere in that range. That's where Zigbo deserves to be, but I think all three are draftable right now. Situation in Jacksonville, certainly less clear just like it is for the people that drafted Leonard Fournette. We'll see where he ends up around the NFL, and we'll see how this will affect your fantasy team, certainly in the coming days. But Leonard Fournette isn't the only training camp faller 
because that brings us to Buffalo and specifically with Devin Singletary. A lot of this is Zach Moss hype, but it's also fumbling when it comes to Singletary. You wanted to get pumped up about drafting Devin Singletary right after the playoffs ended last year. We were all in a Devin Singletary. And now we've kind of fallen back here a little bit. Are fantasy drafters making a mistake here, Jim, by letting Devin Singletary fall? Yeah, when we were talking about doing this segment for a Monday on Friday, Greg, we were talking about, oh, you know, training camp fallers. And I thought that Devin Singletary would be too obvious. I mean, you could make the same case with Leonard Fournette, but it was worth discussing him. But I thought Singletary might be too obvious. But then I did a draft last night, and Singletary went in the fourth round. So clearly people are still in on Devin Singletary, and I don't understand why he's going that high in drafts right now. Because the big reason we were into Zach Moss is not because of the hype, but because of the way the hype was coming. It was specifically saying that Zach Moss was going to get passing down work. And that's kind of the big appeal of Devin Singletary. So if we take away goal line carries, which was something that Singletary was not going to get to begin with, didn't get that last year, we take that away, but then also cut into his targets, we're taking away all the high leverage looks that Devin Singletary was going to get. So what that means is, sure, he may still get 10 to 15 touches per game, but how many of those will be money touches? How many of those will be touches that can quickly turn into fantasy points? I can't think of that many. Like, if you're projecting things out, I think that Zach Moss is going to be the guy getting the money touches right now, and Devin Singletary will not, but people are still taking Singletary pretty early in drafts, and I don't think that is a defensible move right now with the way things shape up. Like, maybe we get to the season and Singletary still gets the passing down work and he's electric. Cool, then we can change t- tunes then. But for right now, it doesn't seem like Singletary is going to get those touches that quickly translate to fantasy points, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So Singletary, I definitely think, is going to be trending down. I think that uh, you can kind of just let someone else draft him. I think that that's kind of the situation where we're at right now, kind of where we're at with Leonard Fournette, where you just let someone else take him because the it's it's very low probability that Singletary falls far enough to actually become a value for fantasy. So for right now, I would just kind of cross him off your list unless, you know, somehow you're in the 10th round and Singletary is still there. Cool, I'll take it. But I don't see that happening right now in drafts, and I don't expect that to change right now. So Singletary is someone I am just avoiding because it's hard for me to see him getting high leverage touches in that Buffalo backfield. But Devin Singletary, with those money touches not being there, well, the draft stock, it's just too high right now. Yes, Singletary could be electric. Yes, he could score from anywhere on the field. But can you guarantee those touches? Can you guarantee he's going to score? You can't. Zach Moss is going to be the guy around the goal line or Josh Allen. So for Singletary to get in the end zone, and that's obviously where your bread is buttered, it's tough. Around this ADP of 51.8, he's somebody that I'm just going to leave on the board for now. One more training camp faller that we want to discuss, and it's a player that didn't practice uh, in the team scrimmage over the weekend, and that's Carson Wentz. His ADP, it's over 100 right now, but during fantasy draft season, I think people are always pretty high on Carson Wentz because you know that ability is there. You know you trust the coach in Doug Peterson, and you want to believe that this is the year Carson Wentz is going to stay healthy. I haven't gotten there yet, Jim. And now you're seeing that his ADP is falling a little bit, and it probably should be. Yeah, and to me, this one has nothing to do with Wentz himself. It has nothing to do with the injury. I think that that's, that's notable for sure, but it doesn't matter too much to me. It's all about situation. Quarterback in, in fantasy football all is about situation because you can be the most talented quarterback in the NFL – But if the players around you aren't good, it's going to be tough for you to produce. And Carson Wentz, I wouldn't put him near the top of the talent list, but he is a good player. And the problem is that his situation continues to deteriorate because now Andre Dillard is going to miss, it sounds like, the entire season with an injury, which means that not only is he missing Brandon Brooks, but he's also missing Andre Dillard, which means that we had to move Jason Peters back to the left tackle. And now we're in a situation where the Eagles' offensive line is still going to be good. It will be a good offensive line even when you account for those injuries. However, it won't be a top five offensive line. I think I had them fourth in my offensive line rankings before all these injuries happened. They're not going to be there anymore. So it is a significant downgrade from that perspective to be in the middle of the pack as opposed to near the top end. Also, now Jalen Rager is banged up. Sounds like Rager is going to miss about four weeks. That means he will not be ready to go for the start of the regular season. And he's a rookie. So missing that key time is really tough. So you take away Jalen Rager, you take away, you know, Alshon Jeffrey is not at full health, you take away two key pieces on that offensive line, and suddenly Carson Wentz's situation goes from being a really good situation to being almost similar to what he had last year. Yeah, Deshaun Jackson is back, but 
you know, you take away the offensive lineman, does that offset the gains at wide receiver with Deshaun Jackson being back? I don't know. I think it's a tough situation right now for Carson Wentz. So through no fault of his own, he is tumbling down my fantasy football rankings. I think there are other quarterbacks going behind him. Jared Goff, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, Matthew Stafford are all uh, players I would consider for sure back there. And I'd just rather go with them than take a chance on Wentz when his situation continues to get worse and worse. And Miles Sanders also banged up for this Eagles team that has just had a ton of injuries during training camp here. The wide receivers, running backs, offensive line. It all doesn't add up to much fantasy production for Carson Wentz. As you mentioned, a ton of other players that you could draft at the quarterback position going around the same range. Probably well worth it at this point. We're just 10 days away from football season beginning. I can't believe it's real either, Jim, but we are there. I can't, t- can't wait to talk more football with you and the rest of the crew the rest of the week. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck in your drafts. 10 days just gave me, like, crazy anxiety, but we're 10 days away, Greg, so let's rock and roll. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Tomorrow on the FanDuel Hurry Up, I'll be joined by Tom Vecchio to chat I hope about more football. I certainly could use the help. Again, I drafted Leonard Fournette. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Have an awesome day. Good luck in your drafts. I'll see you next time right here on the FanDuel Hurry Up.